All right, in the last video, we showed text blocking sketches. Different approaches for how you can organize the type you want around your image. And I'm kind of torn. I like this, but it's, it's pretty straightforward. And I like this one. But I think I'm going to go for the more readable, something like this. Now, it's just a sketch. You don't need to have it all worked out. But the next step in text blocking is to take the block and to divide it into your letter shapes. This is going to help you in your type selection, right? And ultimately in your type design, whether you have to make it all yourself or whether you can modify an existing typeface to serve your purposes. So my next step, I might actually go ahead and hold down Option here. Let's clean this up a little bit. I want the the tower to go over it. So I'm gonna erase it here. So the tower overlaps the type. And then I want this type to overlap this type at least somewhat. So you have proximity, you have overlapping, you have scale and size, all things that you can use. Now I'm going to merge by holding down Option and say Layer Merge Visible. Just so I, I have that. And now I'm going to continue sketching on top of that on a new blank layer. And what am I going to do? I'm going to divide it. So if this is supposed to be northeast, I might really quickly figure out how many letters that is. And then I have to block it. So an N, an O, an R, a T, an H, an E, an A, an S, and a T, right? And I can get a sense of how the letters will space. A nice uh, type or text blocking trick is to use all capitals if you can, because they space themselves. They're designed to space themselves. Lowercase letters weren't invented until the ninth century under the Carolingian Empire in order to fit more Roman letters in a, a biblical manuscript, right? But the problem with lowercase Roman letters is that they have uneven spacing around them, which makes text blocking even more important. So Northeast, and then we have Lakeview here. It's important to know how to spell these things. That can be my complication sometimes. Now I'm gonna do a, a customized blocking for Lakeview. I'm gonna make the L bigger. So the L is actually gonna run over and under. And so my A is going to fit in here. This is at least something I'm trying. This might not look good. <laughs> and this is why we try it out. And then the E, and then the V, and then the I, and then the E, and then the W, which will take a little bit more space. So I'll probably run it pretty close, kind of like that. And then college, which looks a whole lot better in caps, just because I've done a lot of PR work for the college than it does in lowercase. C-O-L-L-E-G-E. -E. All right. So this is the individual, like turning the big blocks into little type type blocks. And it shows you how you're going to arrange it. So I'm going to just do a quick screen grab of that. That is what I will post into the assignment as my text blocking, which is step one. So let's go into this unit and get introduced to poster and type design. We just finished spot illustration, so this is going to be unit 12. Remember, you can use your spot illustration for your poster, or you can use your logo. You can do kind of a pro-science poster, you can do an anti-science poster, something with your logo. 
So here we have some examples. We do the, the text blocking sketch. We design the text in black shape vectors. Then we color it. Then we, we add it with our finished spot illustration on a, a colored background with a border. We get a poster. Same thing here, same thing here, same thing here, same thing here. The text will show us different colors, different aspects, help us understand how to view the spot illustration. This is helping us further understand vectors in their use in, in raster like finished products. It's also going to help us understand type design and layout and composition in a way we haven't dealt with before. So some past examples. Do, 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 do. I did these little animations here. So even something as simple as an, an ampersand, an and sign, can have so many variations in type design. And then the layout and the way you put everything together really matters for how it makes its point too. So some past student examples, some past instructor examples. All different types and how they work with the illustrations. And of course, there's the YouTube videos. You can see past semesters and this semester. So we still see type and images together more than we see any other kind of imagery in our life. And that's because we're so used to seeing advertising, right? Advertising is everywhere. It's on every website. It's in between our Instagram posts. And so in order to combine the type with the, the artwork in a way that works, we have to think of it as a whole. Think of what the relationship is between these. And so whether it's something as important as like a title sequence for a show, which is all type based, and then can also be used as a title flag to go with imagery, like we see with Stranger Things, whether the type is the image itself in this kind of typography, you can see the different text blocking uh, sketches and then different vector designs on the same solution. Or whether it's like what we're doing and posters with imagery within a rectangle, either horizontal or vertical, and with some sort of illustration. We have to, to really control all aspects of the lettering. So we start with that type or the text blocking. So I'm going to post my text blocking sketch. And this acknowledges the deadline, which is always good. And that sets our intention, right? We might have tried out several different arrangements, but this sets our intention for what we're trying to do. Now, I'm going to save that as assignment six text blocking sketch. I'll save it as a PSD with these different variations. Be careful not to overwrite your spot illustration. And it's going into my assignment six folder. You can just put it onto your desktop. Now I need to find a typeface. I can just do it all by hand. This is my uh, a friend of mine who's a poster designer, Akiko Sternberger, and most of her work she ends up just doing the text by hand, you know, customizing it fully. But every once in a while for her movie posters, she will modify something that's existing. So here are some of her recent ones. And for this one, for instance, 
that's a pretty standard typeface, right? It's like a Times New Roman with just some modifications. But even when you use existing typefaces, you want to customize the spacing. You want to customize how bold it is. Uh, there's different aspects to type design we need to be aware of. One is what's called the kerning, and that's the space between the individual letters vertically. And then there is the letting, which is the space between lines of type. And this isn't a type design class, but that's kind of why I show this, like all the, the specific things you pay attention to when you're figuring out spacing and type design. I'm saying type design a lot. All right, so what is the, the next step? You'll see linked in the assignment and on the course outline, this site. So our first new skill was type blocking or text blocking. Now a second new skill is to utilize existing fonts. People call them fonts, they're really typefaces. If I'm being a real graphic design nerd, a font is a modification to a typeface. So bold is a font. Italics is a font. Semi-bold is a font. Even underlined can be a designed font. But a typeface is a collection of custom designed sh vector shapes that make letter forms and numbers and symbols, right? So if we go to defont.com, this is like a Pixabay for typefaces. It gives us lots of options. These were the recently added ones. If I do all the new fonts, which can be interesting, because often, like in Pixabay, one artist will dump like 12 fonts at a time, and hundreds are added every day. So just yesterday, 6,043 were added. Oh, no, I'm sorry. That's just of this one. 6,043 6, were used just yesterday of this typeface. What's nice about Defont is that these are all free to use, but they have Creative Commons limited copyrights to them. Some of them are, are uh, fully free and open to use but a, most of them will say free for personal use, which means as a student, of course, you can use it, which means just for your own personal like newsletters, your own personal needs, you can use it, but they don't want you to profit from them, right? Because if you want to use it for commercial purposes to do like a poster design that you sell, or if you're doing an album cover for someone, right? That kind of thing, and you're getting paid for your work, you, uh, you need to, to license the typefaces just like you would license an illustration or a photograph. Now, you can see the different kind of character to these. These are just the ones that have been recently uploaded. There are a lot of script typefaces. There are some kind of blocky modern italic ones. There are some funky ones. There are even some symbol-based ones with lots of penises and eye drippings. So because you can you can code spot illustrations to different type keys, right? They're called they're called wingdings. And you can look up all of these. But already from this, I know that there are certain ones that kind of work with the quality of my illustration that I like more than others. And I'm thinking like this rain show one is pretty nice. That this novelty script one is beautiful but really hard to read and that these are just kind of too plain. So this is what I want you to do. I want you to take part of your, you take part of your text and you type it into where it says preview. And if you want all caps, type it in all caps. If you want it with upper and lowercase, type it with upper and lowercase. And then I want you to click submit. And it will show you these typefaces with your type. And these are just the most recently uploaded ones. Now, there are things I like about this, but I don't like everything about it. Now that I see the O and the R, I don't like how the, the inside doesn't match the outside of them. So I think I can do better, but I want typefaces that are similar